Hey guys, welcome back to you guys in class. Today we are looking at the third lesson from unit two. This one is on equilibrium, shortages, and surpluses. We're gonna be taking the stuff from demand and supply, putting them together to create the full supply and demand model. So objectives for today are to explain how the price system efficiently allocates resources, to identify price equilibrium on a supply and demand model, and then identify the causes of a shortage and a surplus. Markets are always trying to get to their equilibrium. It is the price that clears the market. It's where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So let's take a look at this model. We got our downward sloping demand curve. We got our upward sloping supply curve. The point at which they intersect one another is our equilibrium. So at this point, we can see that our price is $9 and our quantity is three. If we look at the model to the right, it shows us at $9, the quantity demanded is three, the quantity supplied is three. So that gives us our equilibrium price. Now without government intervention, markets usually end up in equilibrium, but it, sometimes it takes a little time to get there. In some cases, we end up with a surplus. A surplus is when the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. There's extra product on the shelves. Price is usually too high and will eventually come down. But let's see how this gets started. So let's imagine that originally this is our setup. Um, we have an equilibrium price of 12, quantity supplied, quantity demanded are both two at this point. And then something changes. Supply shifts to the right. We have, let's say, a drop in input prices and suppliers can produce more at every price level. It doesn't automatically change in the market. It takes a little time to adjust. So in this situation, we're gonna continue at that $12 price level. Suppliers are happy to supply more at $12 and they can because input prices are cheaper. But consumers, they're not changing at all. They're still stuck at that $12 price level. So the quantity demanded in this situation is two, the quantity supplied is four, and we have a surplus of two units. Now eventually, as markets will adjust, price level will come down. The producers will say, we need to get rid of this extra product, let's drop the prices a little bit, and that drop in price will sell to more consumers, and at the same time, we'll discourage producers from producing as much, and then we find our new equilibrium at $9 once again. Under other circumstances, when price is too low, we end up with a shortage. This means that the quantity demanded is higher than the quantity supplied. So let's start with this original model. At $6, our quantity demanded is two, our quantity supplied is two. We are in equilibrium, and then something changes. Let's imagine that demand increased because of consumer taste changes. So we have a new equilibrium that should be established, but we're not quite there yet. We're still operating under the old price level. It hasn't quite adjusted. Under this, we see that the quantity demanded is gonna be much higher. It's gonna to be to four, but price hasn't changed yet, so quantity supplied stays the same. So in this case, we have a shortage. We have a quantity demanded of four, which exceeds the quantity supplied of two, giving us that shortage of two units eventually Producers will understand that they can raise the price a little bit, and in doing so, that discourages purchases, buyers will buy a little bit less, and producers will produce a little bit more, increasing the quantity supplied, decreasing the quantity demanded, and getting us back to that equilibrium one more time. Now, the price system is always trying to get back to equilibrium, and it's using that invisible hand to help guide resources and convince producers and consumers to do what it needs to do. It sends signals in the form of prices to consumers. If price is too high, they buy less. If, they, if price is too low, they buy more. And producers respond to this as well. Everybody's an optimizing individual. As prices change, consumers and producers will do what's in their best interest, to all, and it always pushes that price back to equilibrium. And in doing so, it allocates resources by providing them to the people who value them the most. All right, make sure you're checking out the practice assignment that you can find in the link below down in the description. And in addition, make sure you check out the next video in this series. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.